Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. Once again, we are joined by mathematician and mathematics popularizer. We'll go with that. We'll go Hannah with that. Fry is her name. She writes books, does all sorts of interesting stuff. But I'll tell you something else she wrote, a PhD. And we were looking that up and found out that your PhD was about droplets and things like that. Is that right? What was yep. your... Called a study of droplet deformation. When we found out this was Hannah's PhD topic, Keith and I, Keith Moore, head librarian at the Royal Society, decided we would look up some droplety papers and pictures to show Hannah today. And that's what we've got here. Isn't that right, Keith? These are my favourite droplets in the collection. I don't mm. get these out for everyone. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about a chap, I believe, by the name of Worthington, is that right? That's right, yes, Arthur Worthington. He's one of those late 19th century figures who are very interested in the way things move and trying to capture that kind of movement. And in his case, it was all about droplets falling. Let's start with this big meaty tome. We've got some Worthington work in here, I believe. Ooh, on the surface forces in fluids. Hello. Exactly what my PhD was about. I'm sure it's a brilliant piece of work, but it is very, very long <laughs> and it's very word heavy and we are trying to make an engaging video. <laughs> what are you saying, Brady? There are very... Oh, hang on. There's a picture. We have a graph there about repulsion and attraction. Um, <laughs> Let me see. Oh, look, we've got more graphs. Have you ever thought about reviewing academic papers? <laughs> Basically, they would get published based purely on the pictures. <laughs> look at there, and we have a good picture, Brady. That's better. Yeah, I like the repulsion one better. Were there many pictures in your PhD? Things? Oh yeah, it was a, a, a you know a, a, a roller coaster yeah? through the the two dimensional Navier-Stokes theorem. It's oh, just, real, just was a real rip roaring. It was a real coffee table book, wasn't it? <laughs> Keith, I appreciate you getting this one out, and I'm sure if we had more time, Hannah would really get her teeth into it. But Keith knows that I like a few pictures, and... Well, I'm, I'm horrified to say that the Royal Society agreed with you, Brady, because it didn't publish Ooh. this paper. Ooh. Ah. I only summarised it. So after all that effort, he only got uh, an abstract. Well, hang on. Was it because it. they didn't like the paper, or was it actually because there weren't any pictures? Uh, well, it's, it was because the paper wasn't considered quite good enough. Yeah. This is another paper of his. Ooh, straight away. And, yeah, that this is on impact. So this is what he's really oh. good at, impacts on liquid surfaces. Another good title. Mm. Look at this, communicated by Professor Osborne Reynolds, Ooh. FRS. Now he, Reynolds, is a very big deal in the fluids world. So there's something now that's called the Reynolds number, named after him, that really characterizes what kind of flow you've got. So the difference between if you've got kind of gloopy honey or, you know, wind rushing past an aircraft. Essentially, it's the same, same equations, but it's the Reynolds number that tells you the difference, really. This is good. Okay, so you have your first impact, then the surface of the water deforms, the object falls down, and then you get this kind of node that appears moving upwards. Look at this, and it breaks off. Indeed, it does. It's received in 1882, read slightly later. He actually dropped two balls, so he dropped a ball of the liquid that was going to hit the surface. And he also at the same time dropped a metal ball which triggered a spark in a dark room and by the light of that spark he would he would capture his drawing oh. and later photography of course that's clever hang on i just noticed something though look he's not just using water here shows the splash of a drop of milk falling into olive oil so i guess the viscosity of olive oil much thicker just, than water just slow the process up a bit maybe yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. oh here we go this is one falling onto a solid surface oh this is your kind of thing isn't it you know mm. what though not spherical by the time it hits. So I think he's actually made a mistake there. Really? But it's, it's okay. Only, it's only. It's okay. okay. I mean, this is 1880s. It's okay. We uh, know more now. All right. <laughs> it gets better than that. Have a look at these bad boys. Ooh, it's making blancmange. So these would have been engraved up in series because he's trying to describe an event in sequence. That looks like a jelly mold. Yeah, it does, so it? it's, it's falling back in. Cut out that bit where I said the jelly mold. It makes me sound really like. No, it doesn't. I already said a blancmange. It's oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> Again, it's milk and olive oil. I like them. Yeah, I like them as well. And behind the scenes here, there's all kinds of absolutely amazingly beautiful physics. You know, the equations for this stuff are just absolutely glorious. And look, here are even more pictures. There are pages and pages of these. And in fact, that one there is especially nice with the little crown. Yeah. But then he decides he wants to publish a book upon it. And that crown look. becomes the crowning achievement of the work. I love so what you've done, here done, he is. Yeah, done I know. Yeah. Don't <laughs> encourage you. I know, sorry. <laughs> 
and a study of, a study splashes. of splashes. He's been chucking solids on there. Mm, he has. And photographs now rather than drawings. That's right. So this is a projectile going into armour plate here. So this is like freezing the splash. He got mm -hmm. appointed to be fellow of the Royal Society. Yep. Good spot, Hannah Fry. We've got the FRS Absolutely. now. The success of the photographs and the additional information they afforded led to a long photographic investigation which formed the subject of two papers in the transactions of the Royal Society. Except for two magazine articles, the results of this work have not been presented to the general public. Moreover, in the illustrations printed by the Royal Society, much of the beauty of the original photographs was lost in the reproduction or was sacrificed in a selection of which the only object was the elucidation of points of technical scientific interest. Ooh. How dare the Royal Society be interested in science like that? Ooh. Well, he might be an FRS, but he's not afraid to have a little swipe. He's saying, having a little go. So I, th I think the early papers, which, which didn't get printed and maybe the illustrations got simply, I think it burned a little bit. He appreciates like the artistic beauty of what he's doing and he feels like he's been shortchanged. Right. It's just like, yeah. yeah, OK, explain the science, but this also happens to be beautiful to look at. Let's yeah. not forget that. Go on, let's see some of the photos then. Look mm. at this. This is amazing. So I think this is about 1906. 1908. 1908. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. This is about the time that boundary layer theory was being formed. So around about the time when the equations that you need to actually describe what's going on here are coming around. Oh, just look. That's lovely. That's nice. They're good pictures. Excellent pictures. We're used to seeing these kind of images now, but 1908, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, scientists would have seen images like this before, but part of the, the interest in getting a book like this out is just so that the general public can see them. You yeah. know, it is a scientific text. It's not that wordy, so it's, you know, you can comprehend exactly what's going on here, and it's revealing a new part of the world to a more general audience. Love it. There's still some questions in this area, like turbulence especially, is, is it like a really big unsolved problem in, in fluid dynamics. But you know, ultimately I think when he was around, that was when this subject was mm. like really sore. Oh yes, cutting edge stuff. But it keeps YouTubers happy these days, I guess. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Dinner time. Oh, check the name of that one as well. The Carolina Goat Sucker. A Carolina Goat Sucker. Let's just yeah, keep... Yeah, let's the, get more background detail in here, the plants that they're perching on. Oh yeah, okay. He's starting to lift his game a bit. He's realised yeah. he's got to up the put ante. Some, put some leaves in there. Put them in their natural habitat. Yeah. Okay, there's a lovely parrot. Uh -huh. The purple jackdaw. Yeah. 